G'day everyone, Ryde here, your Chief Espresso Officer. I'm back, back out of hospital. It was a pretty scary time there, but um, bear with me as my voice recovers. It's not 100% yet, but I wanted to get back filming. Couldn't wait to get back filming to show you what we're gonna do today, which is a very special unboxing of the Flare Signature Espresso Machine. I don't know if you can call it a machine, it's a, a very special portable espresso brewer. So the Flare Espresso machine, if you can call it that, is based on a lever. So the old school style press. It was invented by 65 year old Sergio Landau on Kickstarter. He was a retired mechanical engineer and he invented the very first Flare Espresso Lever Brewer. Now it's so popular, they've actually created five different versions. The basics, the one, the version two, this one which is the signature version, so it has a special pressure gauge that comes with it. And their latest one is actually a 58 mil porta filter uh, design. So you can use a commercial porta filter in this actual Flare Espresso machine. So let's take a look at what's in the box. All right, so let's get into it. First thing you'll notice is this amazing nifty little carry case, which is fantastic. If you are on the move, you're going from hotel to hotel or camping, this all packs up into a nice little briefcase which will fit on any flight. Let's open it up and see what we get. Okay, we've got our quick start brewing guide couple of bolts and an Allen key there, help and do it. This, I'm not sure what that is. Now, here's all the sexy parts. That is the lever. So you can see how nicely that works there. A little dispersion screen. So that obviously put the coffee, uh, that on the bottom of the coffee and that just helped evenly distribute the, the water throughout. Oh, it even comes I think this is part of the signature version. A cute little tamper. And that is solid stainless steel. So that is actually nice, perfectly weighted. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, that might just be the holder. We'll work that out in a second. This is the pressure gauge. And you can see they've actually designed it to show you the bars. So five bar, that's five times Earth's atmosphere, and right up to 10 bar. And they're showing you the perfect range that you wanna try and aim for, because obviously it's a very manual lever. So you, as you're pressing down, you wanna be focusing on that needle, aiming right there. Now I know I wanna aim for about nine bars, because that's a standard pressure of a you know, commercial coffee machine or a home coffee machine. So I don't want to really aim for six bars, although you could probably do a different style of coffee if you're aiming for six bars, but I'm going to try and aim for nine bars. But as long as it's in that range there, that's really to help you understand exactly how much pressure you need to be applying. And you certainly don't want to go over here into the black and putting too much pressure on because you might break the device, but on top of that, you'll probably burn your coffee as well. Okay, this is the brew head by the looks of it. That's the Porter filter brew head. Yeah, see here. Yeah, there we go, look. That's probably where the coffee goes in there. And then there's a little thing that pops off here. Here we go. So that, this is actually a naked porta filter, which is fantastic because you're gonna get to watch how the coffee comes through there and see if there's any extraction problems or anything like that. So I can't wait to film that. And then the base. All of that fits neatly in here. And if I'm not mistaken, that clicks into place like that. Yeah, this is fantastic. What a beautiful design, a copper. They've done a copper model here. So this is specific to the signature range. It's not just a red uh, plastic one. It's a beautiful dollar. And this comes in white, black, and I think silver as well, the signature range. A little warning sign there saying, Please don't use excessive force. It's not about how strong you are. Yeah, so that's everything that comes in the box. So let's get it all connected 
see how she fires up. This needs to click into here, which I showed you before. And what I just discovered is that there's a little screw, that screw and Allen key before is supposed to go in the base here to really fix it in. However, I think there might have been a bit of a manufacturing error with this particular one because it's not catching. Can't get it to catch that bit there. So it's a bit of a disappointment, I think, because that should be a lot easier to connect. Just doesn't quite, you can see here, I think you can see right there, there's just a slight gap. So there's something just catching it. And yeah, look, there's a bit of a mess up. So that's a bit of a disappointment because you pay a decent price for this one. This signature one is 275 US. This is about $500 in um, Australian dollars. That seemed to be a double. And for that sort of price, you know, you want it to be a bit better make than that. Like that should fit together really nicely. So I might reach out to the manufacturer, just find out what's going on there. Uh, but we'll see if we can do it without it. And we'll just place it in here and we'll just hold it in place when we're pressing it and make sure. Okay, moving on, we're going to put this in water and submerge it. Now, as you can see, we're in a different place now. We're not in my cafe at the moment. We're in my kitchen. That's because I haven't gone back to the cafe yet, just while I'm recovering. So anyway, I'm gonna fill it up with boiling water. I'm gonna use 100 degree water here. I'm gonna let that submerge for about 30 seconds. Just, this is like any porta filter. You want it to be nice and hot. You don't want it to be cold because what happens is all the energy when you're pressing will get absorbed into the cold cylinder if it's not already hot. So we're heating it up, let it sit there for a while. If you don't have scales, don't worry about it. You can kind of eyeball it. This little cylinder here, this porta filter, head holds 18 grams of coffee, which is about just over half half an ounce. And this is a little device that we can measure the way the beans in. And we're doing today, because this doesn't have milk, it doesn't have a milk pressurized milk brewer, it's only for black coffee. I'm gonna use a special Ethiopian QG from the Humbella washing station that I've got in. That's a really nice citrusy um, and intense coffee. So I'm gonna weigh out 18 grams. So that's 18 grams, so it's almost to the top. If those of you can see, you can sort of eyeball it if you don't have a, a device. It's obviously designed to be accurate. I'm gonna try it, I haven't tried it, so it might take a while to experiment, find out the perfect dose. Uh, so if you have a set of scales, you can pick these up for 12 bucks online. So I'm gonna grind this, and I'm just using my little Breville grinder. So nothing fancy, just a home Breville grinder. Okay. So I'm just gonna pop this into my Breville grinder. Now, I am just gonna use my settings that I do for the, uh, my little Audi espresso machine here. And they say to grind it a little bit coarser than espresso, but as a starting point, I wanna see what it does exactly on the same grind size as here. So, just gonna grind that into there. There we go. There we go. In the instruction manual, it actually says grind the coffee first and then heat your porta filter. However, I like to keep the coffee as fresh as possible before I grind it. So I'm doing it the other way around. While that's heating up, we have our grinder here. So put in the doser, the area. So I'm just gonna settle it like this. But it's definitely higher. It's a little bit higher than it should be. I might have overfilled it. So it says it takes 18 grams, but hmm, it didn't seem to take 18 grams in that shot. All right. So I think we're sitting at with that. It's 15.5 and that leaves it level. Now the tiny tamper. Want to make sure it's nice and level, nice and even. Polish it a bit, try and get that seal as perfect as it can. I don't know how far it needs to go down, but I'm just using my normal standard press pressure. So there we go. 
it's can't, it can't get the cleanest side there. You can see it's stuck to the sides a little bit. You can see it's stuck to the sides a little bit there. Can't get the cleanest tamp. Uh, but I'm not sure how finicky this device is, but we'll find out. So anyway, we're already there. Now that sits there. The brew gauge sits right on top. Presses in nicely. And so that should line up perfectly with your press there. Now, here comes the moment of truth. Got the drip tray there. And we should be able to extract about 36 to 40 mil out of it. So I've got my little measuring device here. And, and now, should be able to see about 36 mil come out. That'll be the test. Take it for the mother test. So you've got to apply a bit of pressure. Oh yeah, definitely got to apply pressure on that. I'm only getting six, seven bars. There we go, now I'm getting 10. That's a lot of pressure to be putting on. This angle's not great. Yeah, and then you, it starts to drop to zero. There's a point where I can't press it anymore. And then you release it. Now, uh, that didn't look like the greatest shot. But let's give it a try again, see if we can get a better result from it. Try a different angle. I had to apply a lot more pressure than I thought than I did at the beginning. So that's definitely something to learn from. Let's try it again and see if we can get a better result. Okay, so take two. Rookie error, I didn't add the dispersion screen. That definitely is gonna make a difference. Now I've ground it again, and I've ground it a little bit finer than I normally use for my espresso machine. Ground it down just one extra notch. I still can only get 17.4 grams in there, and that's still overflowing as you can see there. So I don't know how much finer I need to go to get 18 grams, or maybe I just have to accept that it can't get 18 grams out of this device. But let's try it now with 17.4. See how we go. Press it down nice and evenly. There's a bit that comes off the side, so I'm gonna lose a little bit. Polish it as best I can. Cleaning the sides a bit. It's a little bit harder. I probably need a little brush. I think they should have included a little brush with this. Well, there we go, it's not terrible. I wish I could get those bits off of the side there, if you can see them, those little bits off the side there, they really irritate me because that I know is gonna cause an issue in the extraction and this is quite a sensitive machine. Anyway, pop that in there. Dispersion screen goes on top like that. Mm. So it's too fine. Definitely too fine this time. It's just dripping through. I'm not even gonna bother continuing with that shot because I've just made it way too fine. What I'm gonna do, oh look at that, it's even popping it off the top here. There's so much pressure in there. So yeah, that's, whoa. Okay, so that's, that's, obviously, <laughs> that's obviously what happens when you use too fine a grind because that, um, you can see there, I basically exploded it. Attempt number three. Now, I had to go coarser with the grinds. So I've gone a little bit coarser than the first one. The first one I did on a grind setting of six. If you've got a Breville uh, Smart Grinder Pro, you'll know that. I went to a five, exploded. I'm going up to a seven now. It means I can't fit as much in the basket because the grind size is bigger. All right, dosed it down a little tiny bit. So I'm going 14 grams now. Just see if that can do it. And I'm gonna try a slightly different press. I'm gonna give it a bit of a pre-infusion type thing. So see if that just gives it a bit extra. What is this, attempt number seven or something now? I feel like we're getting close. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to 
not apply 10 bar straight off. Give it a, a slight thing of, there's so three bars, just till I see that. Yeah, now I'll apply the full 10 bar. Hey, look at that. We're getting a great result. That is the best shot yet. And it's gonna sit just under 30 grams, I think, once that crema rises. There we go. That is beautiful. Best shot we've seen so far. In fact, I think that's very close slightly under extracted so probably the speed of which I did that maybe a bit too much pre-infusion but I think that is definitely the way to go definitely not convinced it had can take 18 grams I'm afraid uh, but I'm still getting 15 14 15 grams at 30 it's going to be different for every device every grinder even which model of the flare you've got um, but that's certainly one of the downsides is the initial setup However, that is as good, if not better, than the little Audi machine there producing espresso. Yes, yeah, slightly under extracted, but that's still lovely. So, all in all, fantastic device. Looks beautiful, takes up hardly any room on your counter space, so if you don't have a lot of room, it's a sort of perfect brewer for that or if you're going camping, the fact that it compacts down into a nice little briefcase. It produces a great shot. If you're just drinking black coffees, so ice long blacks or long blacks or short blacks, perfect for that. My only negatives, I think, is how finicky it is. When you're initially setting it up, you're gonna to expect to waste a lot of coffee, trial and error to get that perfect balance. I didn't find getting 18 grams was possible. You might have a different result, let me know. But for a beautiful, low cost machine that is designer, looks great on your countertop and delivers a great coffee, then you can't go past the Flare Espresso machine. Delicious. And hey guys, if you liked what you saw, give me a like, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you wanna see more content, let me know. As always, I'm Ride, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.